Today is Wednesday, March 30th. What to know about Russian troops backing away from the capital in Ukraine? Could it be the first step toward peace or just a strategy for more war? Also, updated vaccine advice from the federal government and what many Americans are looking for in their next jobs. Hint, it's not just about pay. Plus, a major rule change impacting overtime during some NFL games. New features coming to TikTok. And forget about pet allergies. Scientists say truly hypoallergenic cats could soon be a reality. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Peace talks between Ukraine and Russia seem to show some signs of progress. But Western leaders are still skeptical. Russia has now said it will scale back its military activity around the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv and another city in northern Ukraine. Russian officials called it de-escalation to build trust. And it is more than just a promise. The U.S. military says it has seen evidence of Russia's ground forces moving away from Kyiv like they said they would. But the White House says this kind of movement is just redeployment and not a withdrawal. On the other side of the peace talks, Ukraine offered to declare itself neutral and non-nuclear. Plus, the Ukrainians said they would be open to talking about the status of certain territories that Russia has been trying to claim for a while now. Negotiations are expected to resume today. Meanwhile, the fighting continues in Ukraine. In fact, just as yesterday's peace talks began, a Russian missile hit a regional government building in South Ukraine during normal work hours. Then another missile strike destroyed a fuel depot in western Ukraine. Since the invasion started five weeks ago, thousands of people have died and about four million Ukrainians have fled the country. On top of that, the Red Cross estimates there are 18 million people still in Ukraine who will need humanitarian aid, some things as essential as food, water, blankets, and tents. The U.S., other countries, and charities have already sent billions of dollars worth of assistance, but there are still calls for more. Back in the U.S., it's been just a week now since a deadly tornado outbreak ripped through the Deep South, and now that same part of the country is threatened by more storms today. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Jackson, Mississippi, and Tuscaloosa, Alabama face the highest risk of severe weather. But New Orleans, Memphis, and Nashville could be in the path, too. The National Weather Service says there's a chance of winds that top 75 miles an hour, even stronger tornadoes, large hail, and flooding. The storms are expected to start this afternoon, and meteorologists warn the path could still change and severe weather could pop up pretty suddenly. So 55 million people across the southeast are urged to be prepared just in case. For the first time in history, lynching is considered a federal hate crime in the U.S. President Biden signed the historic bill into law this week. And yes, it's been a long time coming. Over the past 12 decades, different lawmakers have tried to pass anti-lynching bills about 200 times, but they've never made it through Congress until this year. In the past, some lawmakers have argued this kind of law isn't needed to convict criminals. But supporters have argued it's another tool to bring more consequences against the most brutal hate crimes, no matter what happens on the local level. Now, if someone is found to be guilty of a lynching in federal court, they'll face up to 30 years in prison for the hate crime. And people who work together to commit that kind of crime will face the same thing, no matter what role they actually had in the attack. The new law is called the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. It's named after the 14-year-old black boy who was tortured and killed in the 1950s. His murder helped spark the civil rights movement. Millions more Americans are now eligible for a fourth COVID-19 shot. As expected, the FDA authorized a second booster of either the Moderna or Pfizer vaccines to everyone 50 and older. And the CDC endorsed the extra shot for that age group as long as it's been four months since their last shots. The CDC director stressed that it's most important for seniors and 50-somethings who have chronic illnesses like heart disease or diabetes since they're at a high risk of getting a severe COVID-19 case. Federal regulators are expected to authorize an extra dose for even younger Americans in the fall. So since the latest decision just impacts Moderna and Pfizer shots, what about people who got the Johnson & Johnson option? Remember, that's the only one-dose vaccine on the market here in the U.S. And people who got it were already eligible for a booster from any brand. Well, the CDC now recommends getting a second or third dose from either Moderna or Pfizer. The new advice comes after a recent study found people who mixed and matched had much better protection against severe cases of COVID-19 than those who just got the Johnson & Johnson shot, even if they were boosted with another one from J&J. More news coming up, but first, a quick break to thank our sponsor. 
I now have three pairs of Rothy's shoes, and two of them are Rothy's best sellers, the Point and the Flat, and I love them both. They're easy to slip on for pretty much any occasion, and they're stylish, comfortable, and washable. In fact, People Magazine named the Point the best flat for their first ever style awards last year. Of course, that's not all Rothy's offers. They always have a bunch of different colors, patterns, and styles of shoes to choose from. And no matter what you get, they'll be comfortable right out of the box and still look great years later. Plus, I always have to mention how great Rothy's is for the planet. And we're talking about everything Rothy's makes. This is a company that has repurposed millions of water bottles into their signature thread that then goes into all of their products. It's easy to see why millions of women, including me, wear Rothy's shoes every day. Step up your shoes and accessories this spring and get ready to be asked, are those Rothy's? Plus, get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash newsworthy. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S, rothys.com slash newsworthy. Even though many states have dropped all of their COVID-19 restrictions, most Americans are still required to wear a mask on planes and public transportation. So now, nearly two dozen states are suing the Biden administration over it. Florida's governor announced the lawsuit yesterday, saying, quote, if politicians and celebrities can attend the Super Bowl unmasked, every U.S. citizen should have the right to fly unmasked. The federal travel mask mandate was put into place early last year. It was set to expire earlier this month, but TSA extended it through April 18th. And while there are still thousands of new COVID-19 cases reported every day, the number of cases has gone down in the U.S. In fact, the 21 states suing pointed to so many states dropping their mandates as part of the reason the mask rule should be dropped on planes and public transportation. On top of that, they called the mandate government overreach and unnecessary. And these states aren't alone in their demands. Just last week, CEOs from major airlines also called on President Biden to drop the mandate, along with the requirement that all international travelers have to get tested before they board. Neither the CDC nor the TSA would comment on this lawsuit for now to be continued. A hacker just pulled off one of the largest crypto heists in history, swiping more than $600 million in cryptocurrency. Blockchain network Ronin runs the popular game Axie Infinity, which uses NFT tokens. And the network says the attacker made off with the money by using stolen passwords and forging fake withdrawals. And get this, when the attack happened last week, the funds were worth about $540 million. But now at current exchange rates, it's gone up. It actually comes out to about $625 million. And according to the blockchain analysis firm Elliptic, that makes this the second biggest crypto theft on record. So what's next? Well, Ronan says it's working with law enforcement to make sure the criminals are caught. Plus, it's working with the game to try and make sure no player's funds are gone for good. But as of right now, Ronan's users cannot withdraw or deposit funds on the network. The NFL says it's heard the outcries and changes are coming to playoff overtime rules. Team owners approved the change yesterday. Essentially, it guarantees both teams get the ball in overtime. Under the old rule, a touchdown scored by the team that has the ball first wins the game, even if the other team never got their hands on the ball. And which team goes first depended on a coin toss. But under the new rule, even if the first team with the ball scores, the other team still gets a chance too. But this only applies in postseason. The old rule still applies for regular season OT. As ESPN points out, the rule change was mostly made because of public backlash. Some fans especially were not happy when Kansas City beat Buffalo in overtime during the playoffs this past season. The Chiefs scored the winning touchdown before the Bills were given the chance to score on offense. And with that, the NFL's commissioner said he agrees with the change. The NFL says the owner's final vote came down 29-3. to More tools are coming to TikTok to help create that perfect video. The mega popular app says it's teaming up with Giphy to add GIFs, memes, and clips from popular shows or movies to its brand new TikTok library. And over time, more tools will show up there. Think audio, sounds, and text templates that can go straight into videos. And that's not all TikTok is working on. The app is also reportedly testing a watch history so you can finally track down that video you saw but lost. If your app has this tool already as part of the test, it will be under the content and activity section in settings. But it's not clear if or when this could roll out to everyone. Got allergies because of your beloved furry friend? Well, a hypoallergenic cat might be closer than you think because of a new gene editing breakthrough. In a new study, researchers used a cutting edge gene editing tool called CRISPR to block a certain protein found in cats that's thought to cause most allergies. 
It's actually not the cat hair that gives people reactions like sneezing and watery eyes. Scientists say it's the specific protein found in cat saliva. It gets into their fur when they clean themselves, and it can also get into the air. So that's the protein they're editing. And while there are certain breeds already that are said to be better for allergies, so far there's no truly hypoallergenic cat. Well, scientists say that could change in the next five years by having cats genetically bred that way. Some have questioned the risks and ethics of using gene editing technology. But in this case, researchers say the anti-allergy cats will be just as healthy as cats out there now. And that's it for the main news today. So now it's time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story every Wednesday. But first, a message from our sponsor. Getting a good night's sleep is super important to me. And even when I can't get as many hours as I would like, I at least want the sleep I do get to be high quality. So I do my best to set myself up for success, and a big part of that is loving my sheets. Bolin Branch sheets are smooth, soft, and breathable. Maybe that's because Bolin Branch uses the best 100% organic cotton threads on earth. In fact, the sheets are made with threads so luxurious, the company says they're beloved by three U.S. presidents. Bolin Branch signature sheets, the ones that I now have on my bed, come in nine versatile colors, and they come in all sizes. They're 100% free from toxins, meaning no pesticides, formaldehyde, or other harsh chemicals. And they're labeled with top and bottom tags, so making your bed becomes easier than ever. Best of all, Bolin Branch gives you a 30-night risk-free trial with free shipping and returns on all orders. And the Newsworthy listeners can get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use the promo code NEWSWORTHY at bowlandbranch.com. That's bowl and branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch, bowlandbranch.com with the promo code NEWSWORTHY. Now back to Work Wednesday. New data shows the so-called Great Resignation continues, with millions more Americans ditching their jobs last month. The Labor Department says the number of people in the U.S. who quit their jobs in February is historically high at 4.4 million. That's almost up to November's peak of 4.5 million, which set a record going back two decades. But as for this past month, more workers quit gigs in retail, manufacturing, and state and local government education. And, as we've reported before, a lot of people are taking advantage of the wide-open job market and switching jobs, often for more money. And it is, for sure, wide open. Job openings were also sitting at near-record levels last month, with 11.3 million jobs up for grabs. So what are people looking for in a job? Well, a new study by Bankrate found 55% of U.S. adults say, since the pandemic, their top priority is to work from home or have a more flexible schedule. And participants could pick more than one answer, so the second highest priority was pay. Thank you so much for joining us today as part of your daily routine. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day.